Today we're going to talk about phases, eclipses, and tides. This is chapter 18, section 2. And the first thing we're going to cover is how many days does it take the moon to revolve around the Earth? So if you watch, we have our Earth that is rotating on its axis. And it takes 27.3 days, so almost a month. A month would be 30 to 31 days usually, and so it takes just under that. So for this moon to travel around the Earth, it'll take 27.3 days, or 27 and 3 tenths of a day. So how does the moon produce its own light? The moon doesn't produce its own light. I'm sorry, the question is, does the moon produce its own light? And it doesn't. The moon actually reflects light from the sun. So the sun's rays will shine on the moon's surface and the moon's surface will reflect it back and we see that reflection on the earth. So in this case, since the moon is on this side, the earth is here, the sun is over here, we see a full moon during this instance. So nothing else in our solar system produces its own light. The moon just reflects its, um, it, or the other planets and the moon reflects the sun's light. Now the moon goes through phases, and these are the different shapes of moon you can see from the earth, caused by the position of the sun, the moon, and the earth. So what do we see of the moon based on its reflection of the sun is going to be our moon phases. So if you look, we start with the first quarter, or I'm sorry, we'll start with the new moon. Okay, so the new moon is pitch black. There is no reflection. The sun is actually over here on this side. So all we see, the, the back side of the moon is being um, lit up by the sun. So we see this side of the moon. And then it starts creeping into waxing crescent. You will always see the light will come from the right side. So we have waxing crescent, the first quarter moon, waxing gibbous, full moon. So this is where the moon is on the other side of the earth. So the sun's over here. It's bouncing off and we see the fall of the moon at one side. We have the waning gibbous, the last quarter, and the waning crescent. Something we want to look at is vocabulary. We know what new means, we know what full means. Okay, A lot of people like to call this a new moon, but this is a full moon. Think the coyotes howl at the full moon. That's what it looks like. It's pretty quiet during the new moon. The word crescent is a shape, and so you can see the crescent of the light here and the crescent of the light here, and we're actually just naming the light we're not naming the dark part, just the light part. So this is a crescent, and this is a crescent. The word gibbous means fat, and so it's almost full. You can see it's on either side of the full moon. Here's the full moon. You've got waning gib on the waxing gibbous and the waning gibbous. So it's almost full, but not quite. And then you have quarter moon, and this is called a quarter moon because the whole back side of the moon is dark, this side is dark, so only one quarter of the moon is lit. And the same thing on this side. Only one quarter of the moon is lit. This side is dark, and the back side is dark, so one quarter is lit. The word waxing means to build, and I like to think of, uh, if you think of a baby's ears, they have wax build up. Waxing is building up, and waning is dying down. Waning is getting smaller. Okay, so if you think of those vocabulary words, you can almost identify what the moon is. A new moon, again, is where the moon is between the earth and the sun. And this part is the dark, I'm, I'm sorry, is lit. So what we see here, what we see is dark. 
try and shade this in as best as I can with my PowerPoint pen. Okay, so what we're seeing right here is dark. Looks like this. This is a new moon. It's actually, if you look really closely, you might be able to see the outline of this moon. An eclipse, if I eclipse something, I walk in front of it. So I might eclipse the smart board by walking in front of it so nobody can see. In space, we say an eclipse is when an object in space comes between a third object and casts a shadow. Okay, so this is when an object in space comes between a third object and casts a shadow on it. A solar eclipse is when the moon eclipses the sun. Okay, so the moon gets in between the earth and the sun and eclipses it. So when the moon passes between the earth and the sun, blocking the sun from earth. So if you were sitting or standing right here, you wouldn't be able to see the sun at all because the moon would be right in front of it. Now if you were here, you might see a a little bit the top portion of the Sun and if you were down here you would see the bottom portion of the Sun so this is a full eclipse where the moon is if you're here the moon is fully going in front of it but if you live here you'll see a partial eclipse or here you'll see a partial eclipse and this is a partial eclipse you can see the moon is going in front of the Sun um, we can take photographs of this of an eclipse. We can um, look through it with our um, our iPads, that type of thing. But we can't look directly at an, a solar eclipse because the sun um, can burn the retinas of our eyes, and we don't have nerves in our eyes that tell us, "Ouch, we're getting hurt by looking at the sun." So you can look at a picture of a solar eclipse as much as you want. And this is a partial solar eclipse. The moon is eclipsing the sun. And this is a full solar eclipse where this is the moon but you can see the corona of the sun in the back behind it it jets out the umbra is the shadow um, that's cast by the moon if you are in the darkest part so if you are right here seeing a total eclipse a total solar eclipse you are going to be in the umbra. So you're, if you're right here, you're in the umbra shadow. Okay. If you're right here, you're seeing a partial eclipse. That's called the penumbra. So it's the part, if you're right here, right here would be the umbra where the moon is casting a full shadow. If you're over here and you can see the bottom part of the sun or you can see the top part of the sun, you're in the penumbra. So when this picture was taken, somebody was in the penumbra, where they were in a partial shadow. If you're here, that person was in the umbra, because they have the full shadow. Think of an umbrella is a full coverage from the rain. Penumbra is when part of the sun is visible from Earth. This is a lunar eclipse. You can look at lunar eclipses all you want. You don't need any type of eye protection. You can just, because it's just a reflection of the sun, so you're not looking directly at the sun. You're looking at the sun's reflection. And what's happening is, imagine that the sun is behind you as you look at this picture, and your head's in the way. Okay, and this would be the shadow cast by your head. Well, this is actually caused by the Earth coming between the moon and the sun and so if you are standing here you're gonna see that big shadow cast by the earth on the moon and it's gonna cause a lunar eclipse lunar because the moon is getting eclipsed by the sun and this only occurs during a full moon. If you see the alignment, you've got this in the full moon position. This is the only time when the Earth can actually get uh, in the way of the sunlight and cast a shadow on the moon. 
Tides are caused by the relationship of the Earth, the Moon, and the Sun. It's the daily rise and fall of the water over 12 and a half hours. Remember, we have high tide, six hours later, low tide, six hours later, high tide, six hours later, low tide. So this is, as you know, the... Um, and I'm at a loss. Hold on. Oops. Go back. This is in um, Canada where this happens and you have a really um, low, low tide and really high, high tide. Um, this is known as the Bay of Fundy. What does gravity depend on? It depends on two things. How massive an object is, its mass, and how close the object is, its distance. So um, the Jupiter has a bigger gravity than Mercury because Jupiter is very big and the bigger the object the more gravity it has and any object that's close enough is going to get caught in its gravity so it has to do with distance and has to do with the size or the mass. Tides occur mainly because of the moon's pull on different parts of the earth. The moon does have gravity um, it's not as strong as the Earth's gravity, but it has enough gravity that affects our waters. And so that's all we have. Okay, today we're going to talk about